Hi everybody and welcome to the Electronics and Programming Beginner's Guide. Today we're going to change gears a little bit and we're going to talk about something electrical for a change. Woohoo, we finally got to something electrical. What I'm going to show you today is how to set up a micro uh, to prototype with. So what I mean is not on a development board but on a the solderless breadboard and I'm going to show you how to uh, set a micro up completely from scratch. Uh, this is the micro I'm going to be using today. I know you can't really see it, but it uh, is a DSPIC 33 EP 512 GP502. Nice long confusing number there for you. So, uh, some preliminary things that we want to talk about. So, what you start off with is you have a micro. So on the micro, you're going to have a set of pins, which is VDD, which is power, and VSS, which is ground. There are historical reasons why those pins are called that, but I don't remember them off the top of my head. I just remember VDD is power and VSS is ground. So you have these pins coming off. So VSS is going to go to power. I'm sorry, VSS is going to go to ground like that and VDD is going to go to power. Uh, this processor, if uh, memory serves me correctly, is 3.3 volts, which is 3v3 shorthand. That sounds nice and simple. Uh, some, a few things to complicate that. So first of all, whenever you have a pair of VDD VSS pins, you always want to decouple them, meaning that you want to add a capacitor across them. So that would look something like that and uh, generally the value for the capacitor is 0.1 u farads it's a very common decoupling value so if a processor has a, more than a single set of VDD and VSS pins you want to hook those all up uh, the other thing the processor has is AVDD and AVSS so AVDD and AVSS. You might wonder, well, these are VDD and VSS pins, what makes them special? Well, the A stands for analog. So what these pins actually do is they feed the analog section of the microcontroller, uh, meaning that uh, these are the analog to digital converters that these feed. If you're doing precision analog to digital converter work, you would generally add a little more filtering to these, but that's outside the scope of what we're working on today. So these get hooked up exactly the same way. Ground, 3v3, and a decoupling capacitor across them, just like that. In the case of the microcontroller that I'm going to be showing you, uh, the microcontroller actually has a built-in RC oscillator, and that's what I'm going to use for the final demonstration. But if a processor has or requires an external crystal, usually the pins are called XTAL or uh, OSC1, XTAL1, and then XTAL2 and OSC2 or something along those lines. Everybody calls them something differently, even within the same company I found that they will call them something different uh, depending on the line of processing. So the the final standard pin that we need to talk about is MCLR, which stands for Master Clear or Reset, all the same thing. And usually it'll have a bar over it meaning not MCLR, which actually means that you pull the line low to reset. So this pin actually needs to be pulled up with a resistor to 3V3, just like that. And this resistor is generally a 10K, which is a soft pull up. It's kind of a standard value as well for the MCLR pin. So now that we have the basic things hooked up to the microcontroller, we need to program it. And uh, this is where things get confusing. 
So first of all, we're going to be using a Picket 3 programmer. It's a very standard programmer for Microchip. And the pinout for the Picket 3 is VPP, VDD, VSS, ICSP DAT, and ICSP Clock. Um, some of those pins we already know. VDD and VSS, which is power and ground. But what the hell is uh, VPP? Another uh, name for uh, VPP, and this is an alternate name, is MCLR not. And we're already familiar with this one. So this pin gets hooked up to the reset line. So ICSP DAT and ICSP clock. These are the actual programming pins. So what they stand for is in-circuit serial programming data and in-circuit serial programming clock. Well, if you look at the actual data sheet for the processor, and I will show it to you here shortly, there actually are not, and these two pins are not listed, so you think, what are they hooked up to? What they're actually hooked up to is PGED and PGEC. Like I said, nice and confusing. What makes it even more confusing is there are actually three sets of these pins on the 28 pin micro. So there's PGED1 and PGEC1, and then there's 2 and 3. And in reality, you can actually use any one of these pairs to do it, but you want to hook up the, either the 1s together, or the 2s together, or the 3s together to their respective uh, data and clock line. And finally, the uh, the last pin, and I actually forgot to mention this on the last one. This is m micro. There's a pin on this processor called VCAP. VCAP is a very, very important pin. It's very important because this is the pin that regulates the voltage directly to the processor core. Even though this is a 3.3 volt processor, uh, the core logic actually runs at 1.8 volts, I do believe. So the VCAP pin needs a capacitor to ground, just like that. Uh, the recommended value for this capacitor is uh, 10 microfarads, and the recommendation for this capacitor is either ceramic or tantalum. In our case, we're going to be using a ceramic. Okay, so let's get started. So now we're going to take our microcontroller and we're going to go ahead and stick her down in the breadboard like that. So let me show you what the, uh, the data sheet looks like, just like that. Uh, up here we have the master clear pin. We have the AVDD AVSS. Uh, we actually have two VSS pins, or one VDD pin, and then there's the VCAP pin. Uh, the PGEC and PGED pins are kind of hard to find. They're, there's a pair of them right here. These are number one. There's a pair of them right here. These are number three. And there's a pair of them down here. These are number two. I think for today's purposes, I'm going to use number one. Okay, so let's get started. So first we need the AD coupling capacitor. And I'm going to go ahead and stick that guy in right there. This is a... Oh, sorry for blocking the shot, just like that. This is a... 0.1 uh, microfarad ceramic like that and then we actually need another one for the VDD and VSS pins uh, this one is going to be uh, for the uh, this one is going to be for the uh, the two over here and this one is going to be for the two over here I'd like to put this one actually closer if I could, but because of the spread of those two pins, it's kind of difficult to do. So then I've got this little wire jumper that I'm going to 
place right here just like that that uh, there we go that uh, this rail over here is gonna be my uh, VDD rail and this rail over here is gonna be my VSS rail so this one is already jumped so now I need to jump VSS so I've got a little box of jumper wires that I will be reaching to go ahead and like that throw that guy in there so uh, the VCAT pin is right next to VSS and the VCAT pin is pin 20 and uh, this is a uh, another ceramic capacitor so I'm going to count out this is pin 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 and 20 bring that out here those are the VSS pin and a VCAP pin like that so let me reach into my box of goodies uh, these wires are kind of mismatch color wise which is not fantastic so now I'm gonna connect up this uh, carefully this other VSS pin and that VSS pin is pin Eight, so 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, like that. And then I need the final, the VDD pin, which is pin 13. Grab that from over here and bring that to over here, like that. And the other VSS pin. Is that a, it's kind of off screen here, but I've got a bag of different jumper wires, stuff I've done from other projects, etc. Like that. So now we have our VDD VSS pins all set up. So now we need a pull up on uh, MCLR. And I'm actually measuring this resistor. Okay, so this is a uh, KO. Eh. This is a 10K resistor. Let me double check that just for the sake of posterity. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not a 10K. Hundred and sixty six. I know I've got a 10K around here somewhere. Uh, and sure, I can read the. Okay, why am I getting very strange readings here? All right, sorry about that. Uh, my meter was showing me something strange, so I just had to double check. So now I've got my 10K resistor, and I'm gonna jump that from the MCLR pin to VDD, like that. And oh, there we go with solderless breadboards and thin leads, you kind of have to Gently rock it back and forth. There we go. Sorry, it's kind of hard to see. I've got that in like that. And now we need to hook up the programmer. But how do you how do you hook up a programmer to a breadboard? So you have two choices. The first is a point one header that looks like this. This is actually a specialty one that the pins on both sides are extra long uh, digikey and newark and whatnot sell these the other option where did i put it is a cable like this this is a cable that i made myself uh for comparison this is what a standard point one header looks like and this is what the one with the extended pins looks like you can see the tops are the same, but the bottoms, this one is much longer. 
and this is a nice flexible ribbon cable and on the other side I soldered on wires that are solid core and which makes them nice and easy to stab into a breadboard so to hook these up I'm gonna make the blue wire on here my I'm gonna make the blue wire on here my pin number one so this one goes to MCLR like that uh, carefully there we go a little jiggle the second pin is VDD and that's going to go right here uh, come on there we go the uh, next pin is VSS and any one of the VSS's will do like that and now the final pins are data and clock and these are right above VSS on pin 8 so data and then the final pin is clock just like that and then finally we're going to add an LED to this thing and a resistor and we're going to make it blink so the easiest way to do this uh, is to use a pin that's very close to one of the power and ground pin power or ground so in this case I'm going to use the power pin right here and uh, this pin right here in the very corner this is RB5 and we're gonna go ahead and put this on RB5 Ooh, this is very tricky with a diode LED there we go because the legs are so skinny they're very easy to bend and then we're gonna tie that LED up to power Uh, again, give it a little jiggle. Oh, there's one side, and there goes the other side. And there we go. This is our complete setup. So if we look at the pick kit, the pin number one on here is marked. And like I said, uh, uh, the blue right here is the VPP, which corresponds to pin one. So this guy plugs in just like that. Uh, the picket actually has six pins on it you don't use the last pin uh, supposedly this is going to be a pin for expansion for the future but the picket's been around for a while and nothing's yet come of that pin and we're back so unbeknownst to you a week has gone by since this last section of video because i actually burnt out the processor that i had this is the the bad one and what I did was is I was being very impatient. So this VCAP pin that I told you about in the previous video said requires a 10 microfarad either ceramic or a tantalum capacitor. The reason it requires those either one of those two capacitors is because those capacitors have a very low effective series resistance or ESR. What I was hoping to do is just sneak by by using one of these uh, 0.1 microfarad ceramics, which is two orders of magnitude smaller so it wasn't working so instead the only other capacitor I had was this 220 microfarad uh, there we go 220 microfarad aluminum which is just way too big so what happened was is I burnt out the internal voltage regulator to the processor whoops because I was being impatient and I I had the parts available just I had to I could only get them the next day so what I did was and this is my fix so to speak this is a, a 1206 uh, surface mount part and it's soldered onto a 0.1 header and this is a 10 microfarad capacitor and this guy goes right here just like that so uh, realistically the continuation from this part 
from right now is going to be in the next video where I write the software and I download it and debug it. But for the sake of completeness of this video, now that the processor is all wired up, I'm going to go ahead and uh, blink the light for you. And if you're interested in how I downloaded the software and wrote it, etc., uh, please look at it in the uh, next video. And I will link that in down below. So this is what the final product looks like. I'm powering the board with my Picket 3, and i show you how to turn that on in the next video, or in the middle video, whatever you want to call it. So I have my meter here, and a few things that I wanted to show you is, uh, first of all, the system voltage. And this is not the easiest thing to do. Do there we go? It's 3.09 ish, 08 ish volts, which is about right because you're going to have some voltage drop through the cable and through the resistances uh, to the microcontroller. But this microcontroller has a fairly wide uh, voltage over which it can work. The other thing that I wanted to show you is this V cap. So, as I mentioned, the core of the processor runs at 1.8 volts, and then there is an internal voltage regulator that supplies that, which makes it really nice. So, I am fairly sure that the internal regulator to the processor is an LDO, or a low dropout regulator, uh, because you need, the, uh, a, you need a smaller voltage that the... Well, a regular can operate over. So let me show you this VCAP voltage and I'm going right across this capacitor and you can see 1.8 volts on the money. Uh, let me get a good connection. There we go. And uh, as you can see, I've gotten the light blinking. Uh, I got lucky with this one. The code worked uh, right off the bat. And I will uh, post the code uh, publicly uh, in uh, on my website. Le, sorry, getting a little tongue-tied there. Uh, if you like my video, uh, please give me a thumbs up on uh, YouTube. And uh, if you have any questions, you're welcome to comment on uh, both YouTube and my website. Uh, also, please uh, subscribe both on YouTube and my website. Uh, Thank you very much for watching. Oh, a uh, quick thing. I'm thinking my next video is going to be some uh, uh, diagnostic tips on errors that you get for when you're programming PIC microcontrollers. There's three or four of them that really commonly come up, and uh, I'm going to walk you through some diagnostics to uh, some diagnostic routines on what to look for when you get there, those errors.